So what is going on everyone, Fernando Silva here with another video and I've been using iPadOS 15 Beta 7 for about a week now and I wanted to give you guys my follow up review, my follow up video to see kind of how those bug improvements I've been doing, how the performance improvements I've been doing and then overall battery life because again we're trying to get to that point where we're getting that 8 to 10 hours of battery life on this iPad Pro, on the M1 iPad Pro and right now with these betas we haven't been getting them but aside from the battery life these betas have been extremely stable and we're going to get into it and see if there's anything that we found moving forward during this last week with this new update and also see if I recommend iPadOS 15 beta 7 to everybody. But let's get into it. So let's get right into this video everybody. So like I mentioned, we are on iPadOS 15 beta 7 and that is the developer beta that we're on. That is the latest one and ideally I believe that tomorrow we will be getting beta 8 and then after that an RC edition and then the final release. So I think we're going to have one more beta, an RC edition and then kind of get after it with the regular release because like we saw, if we get out of here, go into our settings, we are now in the A category when it comes to the actual software update. So normally Apple goes down in letters so you can see that right here we're on A where it says 19A5337 lowercase a. So the next one will be without a letter, then we'll have an RC, and then that'll probably be it, honestly. So once we get to that point, that is when it's gonna be released to the public, because I believe September 14th is gonna be the keynote that Apple has to kind of present everything to everybody in terms of what software updates are gonna come out, and then probably the next day or that same day it's gonna be released to the public, and then a week later we'll get the, all those new iPhones. That's usually kind of the release schedule that Apple gives us. But there's two things inside the settings that we didn't notice when it comes to this beta update that we didn't notice in the very beginning. So if you go into your settings, then you go into general, then you go down here to VPN and device management. We talked about the private relay that they added onto beta 7. Some people said that it was active already prior to beta 7, but for me it personally wasn't. But another thing that they added is that this sign into your work and school account is a new splash screen. So this is a little bit new. You can see that it's a little bit different and that it now says to include your email address. And then it also on the bottom, there's a little learn more button, which takes you into the remote management, which I'm going to blank this out. But again, this is, that's all information for if you do work in an organization that has an iPad and you guys work with iPads and things like that, this is how you would get into it, sign into your account, and kind of start working from there. And then another thing that was kind of added or kind of brought back, because in the last two betas it wasn't even there, is if you go into Apple Music, and I'm not an Apple user per se, but now they added lossless audio back to third-party headphones. Because before, with third-party headphones, with beta 5 and beta 6, lossless audio was kind of gotten rid of or was deleted and you can only use it with first party Apple headphones but now lossless audio is back for third party headphones. But again those are all the tangible features that we saw and improvements that we saw with the beta 7 update after a week of use but again performance has been awesome I haven't had any issues the only issue that does sometimes happen is that Twitter does kind of quit out like that so you do have to kind of open it twice but once you open it for the second time it works totally fine you click it again it opens the only time it doesn't work is when you open it from scratch I believe but sometimes it does. So you can see that Twitter's a little bit hit or miss, but for the most part, it has zero kind of detriment to the actual use case of Twitter because if it doesn't open, then it just opens right back up the second time you touch it, like I saw. But outside of that application, everything else has been running smoothly. Multitasking works great. As you can see here, you can pull this up. There haven't been any issues in terms of kind of connectivity or being able to use multitasking, using YouTube Studio, like everything works and it's still as snappy as it was as if you weren't in a beta program. That's why I've been recommending this beta program to a lot of people because overall this has been the best and most stable beta program that we've had since I've been using it and it's been about two years now that I've been on the beta program. And the last thing I do wanna show is in settings, we get out of here, let's go into the battery life, see what our screen on time is looking like, right? So in our last 10 days, we got about two hours of screen on time, but you can see that over the weekend it kind of died down. One of the more intense days, and this is how I kind of tell people to really look at your battery, really understand what's taking up all the energy from your iPad Pro. Because again, Apple's given us 10 hours of battery life, but I think that's best case scenario when you're not using a magic keyboard and you're using it just as a tablet to like surf the internet, watch videos, then you'll get that 10 hour battery life. But for the most part, this is what you're looking at, five hours and seven minutes of screen on time, three hours and 45 minutes, it just depends on the applications that you're using. So LumaFusion, for instance, 33 minutes took up 33% of my battery. Think about that, 33 minutes, so one minute per percent of battery. But then you go to Gmail, which is using it for 31 minutes, 13%. YouTube, one hour, and it only took up 9%. So again, it really depends on the type of applications that you're using. 
But then on a day like this one, you can see that YouTube, 65%, three hours almost. LumaFusion, 27%, 47 minutes. So it really just depends, like I keep saying, the intensity of the task and how much battery, RAM, and just overall you know, performance it's taking up and usage it's using with the battery life. So again, we're gonna try to push it to that six to seven hour battery mark and kind of see what we can do with that, but hopefully once a regular release and once a public release comes out to everybody, we'll be able to really get some good battery testing in. But again, we're always on the beta program here, so I don't know how that's gonna work, but We'll figure that out to kind of really push the battery life for this iPad Pro. But that's going to do it for this view. Let's get out of here and go to the normal view. So as you guys saw, there weren't too many differences, if any at all, right? Again, this is mostly going to be more bug fixes, more bug improvements, more performance improvements, because again, we're now getting to that point where the final releases are going to come in middle to end of September when those new iPhones release. And again, we're going to be in September in a couple of days, which means two, three weeks max before this gets released to everybody. So at this point, if you haven't installed it, then I guess just wait for the actual official release to come out. But if you're really yearning to get into the iPadOS beta game, by all means, jump on it because this has been extremely stable. I've been very happy with it. The betas have been the most stable that I've personally experienced. And I've been doing the beta program since iPadOS 13, when iOS and iPadOS really kind of divvied up finally and iPadOS got its own operating system, and that's kind of why I wanted to start reviewing these kind of iterations of these updates, because every single time one comes out, something new usually happens, obviously. But again, the farther we get into these beta, so we're in beta seven, we're probably gonna get to a beta eight, and then an RC edition, and then I think that's gonna pretty much be it. So, so again, look out for beta eight coming this week, and then probably in two weeks, we'll get the RC edition, or in one week, the RC edition, and then the final release during Apple's keynote, which apparently is gonna be September 14th. But I don't know, there hasn't been an official announcement. It's just kind of in your Apple calendar for now, if you do look it up. But, but that's gonna do it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Hopefully the audio is a little bit better. Like I mentioned, we got the microphone right here, hopefully picking up the audio a little bit better. But, but don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, leave a comment down below. Are you guys updating to the new iPad OS beta seven or beta eight when it comes out? Are you waiting until the final release actually does release in the next two to three weeks? Or have you even put it on any of your devices? And if you did, which one? Is it your main device, a backup device? Let me know, I'm always curious to know how many people are actually playing around with these betas versus actually just watching these videos and then waiting for the actual release come September 14th, which is when I think it's gonna be released. But that's gonna do it for this video, like I mentioned. One more time, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Check out channel sponsor, Paperlike, and Tiny Rigs down below. Until next time, peace.